Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on my top 10 tips for how you can improve your coloured pencil drawings and how to make them look more realistic. This is my second video in my series all about coloured pencils. My first video was all about how to blend coloured pencils, so please check that out if you missed it. I'm going to be doing lots of videos such as comparisons between Fabricast style pencils and Prisma colour pencils as well as lots of other things like how to make skin tones using colour pencils and how to draw eyes and other features and all that sort of stuff. So please subscribe to keep up to date and so that you don't miss out on anything. Okay, so my first tip is to invest in some really good quality colour pencils. I know that people tell beginners that you should just go for the cheaper ones to start off with but I really think with coloured pencils that that is not the case. Cheaper pencils just have such a different quality to the higher up ones that it's like basically working in a different medium. So when I first started coloured pencil drawing I straight away bought the really good brands. So the first ones I bought was the Faber-Castell 120 set and that is the full set and they are really good and I heard a lot of great things about them so I went for these ones first. But then I also heard that Prisma Colors had really creamy, they were really creamy pencils and really good for skin, so I thought I'd try that out. But I didn't want to go for the full set straight away, so I knew that I wanted them for portraits, so first I went for the portrait set, and it has 24 skin tone colors in there, and it was really good, and I really liked them. So for my birthday, I asked for them, and my boyfriend, who is great, bought me the Prismacolor 150 set and that is the full set also. So the good thing about getting really good colour pencils straight away is that you know it's not the materials that are going to limit you from doing a great drawing. If you buy the cheaper ones then you can be limited because they might not blend as well and there might not be such a large range of colours. But with the more expensive ones you know you've got professional grade ones so you can produce really good drawings if you have the skills for it. And it will only be your skills that are restricting you from doing those really good drawings. So therefore I think it's really good that you invest in good quality coloured pencils straight away. Okay so my second tip is all about the type of paper you're using. For coloured pencil drawings I recommend to use quite a thick paper. So I at the moment am using the Strathmore Bristol Vellum Smooth and for this it was £20 for 15 sheets which is quite expensive especially if you're a beginner but it is really good quality and I really like it to work on. The reason I say get quite a thick paper is well I use a lot of solvents for blending so I use paint thinner and if I use thin paper it would just crinkle up and it, would just, it wouldn't be very good and I just think if you use thick paper the drawings, I don't know, I feel like it just looks better on thicker paper but that's just me so it's up to you for coloured pencil drawings I think that you should get a paper that doesn't have too much tooth but it has enough tooth so that you can apply lots of layers so you don't want too much tooth because it will be really hard to get skin tones if there's too much texture but you do need a bit like I said for layering so what I'd recommend is go to a local art store and just get lots of different sheets of different types of paper and just test them out and see what you like. Everyone's going to like different paper, especially for because you'll all be doing different types of art. So it's up to you, no one can say that there's one amazing paper that will suit everyone, so just go out and try them. I wouldn't recommend buying really expensive pads straight away without testing it out because if you don't like it then you've just wasted a lot of money. So like I said, buy single sheets or if they only come in pads, buy one that has only a few sheets in it. Okay, so my third tip is all about time. A lot of people don't spend enough time building up layers, blending and adding all the details from their reference photos that they could have. So just by spending more time doing all those three things, you could really improve how realistic your drawing looks. So definitely spend time making it look three dimensional by building up a rich colour tone by adding lots of layers and just focus more on your reference photo and just don't rush it. It will be really worth it in the end to spend that extra few hours really building up details and layers. Okay, so my fourth tip is all about layering and blending the coloured pencils. 
It is really important to layer colour pencils because you really need to build up a rich tone. It is very, very rare that something is just one block colour. There will normally be lots of different shades and shadows and lights, so you need to use lots of shades of the same colour to make the drawing look realistic. For example, if you're drawing a leaf, then you'll need to use lots of different shades of green to make that leaf look realistic. So to layer, you just do a layer of the colour, blend it out, add more layers, and you need to blend the layers, so you can use lots of different things to blend with. My favourite thing to blend with is paint thinner, and I use lots of different types of brushes to blend the paint thinner. These were so, so cheap, they were £1.99 each, which was just a bargain. I got them from my local art store, I don't know how much they are online because these were in the sale, but they are, where are they? They're Royal and Langnickel Soft Grip Paint Brushes, so you can go and try them out, they are so good quality even though they are really cheap. But you can also blend with colourless blenders and burnishers, I've done a whole video on blending what I think of the different blenders and how to apply them and all those kind of things, so check that out if you're interested in that. Also, when layering, don't limit yourself to using shades of one colour. So for skin, you wouldn't just use lots of shades of peach, for example. You'd use pinks, reds, peaches, yellows and browns all together to make it look realistic. So definitely experiment with what colours will layer together and work well to get the colour you're going for because it might be that there won't be a specific colour that's exactly the same as the colour that you need so you might have to mix colours together to make that colour and you do that by layering. Okay so my next tip is to do with lighting. I definitely had to learn this one the hard way because I did lots of drawings in my room and I used those warm glow yellowish bulbs and so when I did the drawings under them lights it would look great and I'd get it looking exactly how I wanted and I'd be really proud of it and I'd take it downstairs or outside to show everyone and it just looked completely different. And that was because it, I wasn't using natural light, I was using a yellow hue that of course will make it, my drawing look different. And this then meant I had to spend hours trying to fix the errors and it just it was just a waste of time and it really disheartens you when you get something looking exactly how you want it with the colours and then it, you just have to do it again basically. So what I did was I did some research and seen what other artists were using and I found this thing called a daylight lamp and mine was about £50 from Amazon and it's just really good. What it does is it has natural light so it's basically the same light as what you'd get outside and so when you draw under that, so when I did my drawings under that and then took them outside or whatever, it looks the same and also it's really good for your eyes so if you're drawing for a long period of time then it can really strain your eyes and you can get a lot of problems so using the daylight lamp really helps that because it's natural light and it also means that you can draw at night without getting a lot of eye strain as well Okay, so my next tip is to use an electric eraser and an electric sharpener. I am using both the Derwent electric eraser and the Derwent electric sharpener. The eraser was about £5 and the sharpener was about £10. They are really good. Derwent did a really good job with these, especially considering how cheap they are. The quality to price ratio is really good here. So yeah, the electric eraser is really good at getting fine details such as strands of hair or shine in the hair and because you can make this eraser into a really fine point, it's easy to get highlights in the eyes where you really need to get fine details and lots of other details. So yeah, it's a lot easier to get it with an electric eraser compared to a rubber because manually it's harder to get it to a point and to really lift as much colour off as you need to get a really good highlight. Whereas an electric eraser is really good at lifting lots of colour off to get a really intense highlight. Considering it's so cheap, I really think that you should try it out. It's really good and I just I can't do my drawings without one of these. The electric sharpener is really good at sharpening colour pencils. I have never had a Faber-Castell pencil break in this. I haven't used my Prismacolors that much. I know a lot of people say that they're going to break and that the wood case and slits and all that, but I haven't had one break in this yet. But I really hope that they don't because I don't want to have to replace them. So yeah, this is definitely going to prevent breakage because it is so much more accurate than doing it manually. So yeah, I definitely think that you should 
invest in both the electric sharpener and the electric eraser. They are two really essential tools for creating great realistic drawings. Okay, so my next tip is to make a colour chart. I decided to make a colour chart because when I was doing my drawings, I relied on these colours on the pencils and so I'd use these colours think, oh, what's the best colour? I'd pick it and then I'd do the drawing and it just wasn't the same colour as this. So it just really frustrated me so I decided to make a colour chart so that I can compare the reference photo to the colour chart and pick the colour that's more accurate. So I did this large colour chart for the whole of my 120 Faber-Castell set and I just did a little sample of each colour. So I did a little sample of each colour and then just next to it I wrote the name of the colour so it was really easy to find it in the set. So I would get the reference photo and lay it over this and then look down and see what colour best suited whatever part I wanted to do. And then I just used that, yeah, and I could just rely on this because obviously I've drawn the colours out so they're going to be the same. And it just saves so much time that I'd have had to do just changing and altering the colours if they weren't exactly what I needed and it really makes sure that you're picking the best colour because if you just judge it by these parts then you could be picking a colour that's not the best for what you want to do it could be your right for what you want to do but there could be one that was better and you wouldn't have known that because you hadn't drawn them all out first also to get around this sometimes you could just test it out on a piece of paper before putting it on your actual drawing just to make sure it is what kind of colour you thought it was because sometimes the colours just come out a lot different than what this is. Not all the time but some of the time and it can really mess you up if it's just hard to get rid of it. So yeah, make a colour chart, really good. I haven't yet made one for my Prisma colours but I'm definitely going to do that one. I'm also going to do a video on how you can make one but with punching holes in it. So punch the holes in the colours and then you can line the reference photos under it so that you can really accurately see what one's the best. Okay so my next tip is to use a good reference photo. This is because not every reference photo will translate into a great drawing. Even if you copy it exactly and you're an amazing artist and you just do it perfectly, it might not look that good because the reference photo in the first place wasn't a particularly good one to use. So what makes a good reference photo? Use one that is really good quality, has a lot of contrast so that there's interest in it, so there's shadows and highlights and also that there's lots of detail. Maybe not so much that you'd be there constantly for hours and hours putting in all the details but just enough to make it look really realistic. Anyway, so you can find really good reference photos on lots of different websites. I'm going to be doing a video on my favourite websites for finding really good reference photos. When you pick a reference photo, make sure it's either royalty free or you have permission to use it. Because if you don't and you sell the drawing or make prints and just make money from it, then that is illegal and you'll get into a lot of issues. So make sure you get a royalty free one, there's so many out there to choose from or just go and take the photos yourself. So my next tip is to test any colours or techniques on scrap paper first before putting it onto your original piece. And this is because if you pick a colour, you think it's the right one, put it on your piece and it's not the right one, you have to spend so much time fixing it and getting it to the colour you want, whereas if you tested it on a piece of scrap paper first, you'd realise it's not what you're looking for and you'd have been able to pick a different one and it would just save so much time. Also it's really good to practice techniques on scrap paper first so you can see what works, see what doesn't work and then you can put the best techniques and the best colours onto your piece to get it looking its best. Okay so my final tip is to not be afraid of failure. So many people stop drawing because they don't think they have the potential to do well and they're just scared of what people say and think about their drawings. But everybody has to start off somewhere. Everybody makes crap drawings at the start and then they learn what they did wrong. They learn from their mistakes and they learn new techniques by watching YouTube videos or just looking up stuff or just by being taught or anything and they will improve. You'll be surprised at what just enforcing these techniques will do to your level of drawing. A few years ago when I started drawing, my, my artwork was not very good. I thought it was great at the time, but now looking back on it, it wasn't very good, especially considering how much I have progressed. 
it's so you definitely will improve even if you don't think you will now even if you think for years and years you have not progressed it might be because you just haven't learned what you're doing wrong in the first place you have to learn what you're doing wrong and what you need to do to improve and hopefully my videos in this series will help you with some of those issues so yeah definitely keep drawing because you will get better and you will improve just have faith in yourself and you will do really well Thanks guys for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful in some way. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and if you like the idea of any of the videos I've mentioned I'll be doing, please subscribe as well so you don't miss out on anything. Please like, comment, share, all that sort of stuff so it can really help my channel grow. I really appreciate it. Also you can follow me on all the social media sites, links will be in the description. Thank you for watching and have a great day.